Hi everyone, welcome to Mathematical Preliminaries. This course is intended to serve as a review of mathematical concepts related to structure mechanics. We will start off with the choice of coordinate systems. Coordinate system is a mathematical framework that is used to represent points, positions or locations in space or in a plane. Coordinate system provides or describes the relative positions of objects or points in a systematic and standardized manner. Coordinate systems are fundamental in understanding different concepts related to structure mechanics. There are several types of coordinate systems uh, that are used in structure mechanics, such as the well-known Cartesian coordinate system. So we can see that a Cartesian coordinate system on the screen. This coordinate system is drawn in a 3D space, which is normally called a 3D real space. This space has got an origin and orientation of basis vectors. So we have got three basis vectors in the Cartesian coordinate system. These three basis vectors are completely independent of each other and they can define a point anywhere in a 3D space. That point can be a scalar or a vector. It is important to note that the three basis vectors are completely independent of each other. In other words, the, any basis vector can't be obtained by adding or multiplying a scalar, which involves the other two vectors. So to be more specific, for example, if we have got a point P having coordinates x1, x2, and x3, the point x1 on E1 basis vector cannot be obtained by any combination of X2 and X3. And hence it is called an independent basis. The other important coordinate system used in structure mechanics is a polar coordinate system. Polar coordinate system represents point using a distance, which is normally a radius from a origin or a central point and an angle. This angle is measured in degrees or radians from a reference direction, as can be seen on, in this figure. Another important coordinate system is a cylindrical coordinate system. So as the name suggests, it is this coordinate system is in the form of cylinder. It is having a three-dimensional system that extends polar coordinates by adding a height, which is Z coordinate. It's often used to describe points in a cylindrical objects or situations such as cylinders or pipes. The other important coordinate system is a spherical coordinate system. A spherical coordinate system involves three-dimensional system that combines radial distances and inclinations. This type of coordinate system is useful for describing points on surface of sphere or spherical objects. So for example, if we are doing if we are trying to study a reinforced concrete slab that is of rectangular shape, then a Cartesian coordinate system will be the easiest one defining points anywhere in a space. However, if we have got a ear or a column that is of cylindrical shape, so then cylindrical coordinate system will come out to be very handy. If we are trying to describe a shell, our reinforced concrete shell structure in a space, a spherical coordinate system will be useful. In case of complex structures such as shells, it is important to understand the parametric representation of planes and lines. A parametric representation of a curve is a mathematical way to describe the points on that curve 
by specifying their coordinates as function of one or more parameters. So we can see on a screen that we have got a semicircle. This semicircle can be defined in a space, in a rectangular space, or in a 3D Cartesian coordinate system. And each coordinate can be then made a function of s. Thus, instead of directly defining the curve equation in terms of x1 and x2, can express each coordinate as a function of variable s. And this s is called as a parameter. This type of approach is particularly useful for describing curves that may not be easily represented by a single equation. x1, which is defined as a function of s, and x2, which is also defined as function uh, of s, can be written as r cos s and r sin s. r is the radius of a circle in this case, and s is a parameter s is actually the inclination that ranges from 0 to pi. In the case of 2D structures, we can define two parameters, which are s and t. And by means of these two parameters, we can define the whole area. Similarly, in the case of 3D structures, such as a beam or a plate, we can define three parameters. And each dimension can be then defined in terms of R, S, and T. Parametric representation of curves help us defining very complex 2D or 3D structures, and they make the computational analysis very simple. Now let us move on to scalars. A scalar is a physical quantity with magnitude only such as temperature and density. So if we have a Cartesian coordinate system, E1, E2, and E3, and imagine we have got a beam which is, which is subject to some fire. So every point in the beam can be defined as theta x1, x2, x3. Theta is the temperature at every point in the beam. So temperature is a scalar quantity which requires only magnitude. Temperature has got no direction. Similarly, density of a structure is also a quantity which requires only magnitude and no direction is required. So we might have a composite structure which has got density varying at different points. So density of that composite structure can be defined by the help of three coordinates, x1, x2, and x3, in a Cartesian coordinate system. Now let's discuss vectors. Vectors are physical quantities with magnitude and directions. The example of vectors is force, accelerations, velocities, etc. So within a Cartesian coordinate system, a vector can be decomposed into three components. And as shown, we have got component V1, which is in the direction E1, another one V2 in the direction E2, and the third one V3 in the direction E3. In order to further understand acceleration and velocities, let us discuss a multi-story building which is subjected to seismic loading. We can visualize the velocities and acceleration in the form of position vectors corresponding to a point taken randomly in the building. There is a velocity vector tangent to the path corresponding to each position vector, and the relation is v is equal to r dot. Please remember that this path is traced by only one point within the building. These velocity vectors 
can also be plotted from some arbitrary point C and derivative of these velocity vector will be the acceleration vector A is equal to B dot. The acceleration vectors are tangent to the path. This path is called hodograph in case of accelerations and velocity system. This is called as a path in the case of velocity and position vector. We see that the acceleration has the same relation to the velocity as the velocity has to the position vector. In case of vector, it is important to appreciate that a vector is invariant under change of coordinate. So we might have a Cartesian coordinate, a spherical coordinate system, a cylindrical coordinate system, or whatever. The vector having magnitude and direction is invariant. So it doesn't matter which coordinate system we take, the vector will stay invariant. The other important point is that a position vector depends on the definition of coordinate system. So a position vector is not strictly a vector. As we can see in the path diagram of this figure, the three points are described by position vectors, R1, R2, and R3. These position vector depends on the definition of coordinate system. The, these position vector will be different in the case of Cartesian or spherical coordinate system. So the position vector is not an invariant, and therefore, strictly speaking, it's not a vector. 